In this video, we'll discuss combinatorial proofs. A combinatorial proof is a proof that is done by counting things in two different ways. As an introductory example, consider this. We've seen before that if a pizza place offers n different toppings, then you can determine the total number of pizzas possible by counting it in two different ways. One way you can count by considering each individual case. That's shown here on the left. These are the individual cases. What that means is n choose 0 tells us how many 0 topping pizzas. n choose 1 tells us how many 1 topping pizzas. n choose 2, how many 2 topping pizzas, and so on, all the way until we have a pizza with the works n choose n. Meanwhile, on the right-hand side, this is a different method of counting where we think of each topping as a yes or no choice. You could say, yes, I want pepperoni. No, I don't want mushrooms. On and on down the line until you've answered a yes or no question about every single topping that has been offered. And since these both count the same number of things, the left-hand side of this equation must be equal to the right-hand side of this equation. Here's the big idea. If you can use two different formulas to correctly count something, then those two formulas must be algebraically equivalent. Here we'll show an algebraic proof that n choose k is equal to n minus 1 choose k minus 1 plus n minus 1 choose k. After we look at the algebraic proof, we'll double back and we'll explain through a combinatorial proof why it makes sense that these two sides, these two algebraic expressions, are equal to each other. To do this proof, I'm going to start on the right-hand side. I'm going to start with n minus 1 choose k minus 1 plus n minus 1 choose k. And I'm going to simplify this algebraically until I reach the left-hand side, n choose k. For my first step, what I'll do is I'll use the combination formula to rewrite as n minus 1 factorial over k minus 1 factorial times the difference factorial. Now be careful because the difference between these two, n minus 1 minus k minus 1, will really just be n minus k, because the ones will cancel. The second combination, n minus 1 choose k, when I use the combination formula there, I'll have n minus 1 factorial over k factorial, once again times the difference factorial. And this time I'm going to write it as n minus k minus 1, rather than n minus 1 minus k factorial. OK, now my next step here will be to get a common denominator. Be very careful here as well, because the denominators are super complicated. However, they're way more similar than you realize. The fraction on the right has a k factorial, while the fraction on the left has a k minus 1 factorial. And so, if I multiply the fraction on the left by k over k, a well-chosen 1, then in the denominator of the fraction on the left, I'll have k times k minus 1 factorial, which is indeed k factorial. Meanwhile, this fraction on the left has an n minus k factorial, whereas the fraction on the right has an n minus k minus 1 factorial. And so if I multiply the fraction on the right by n minus k over n minus k, another well-chosen one, n minus k times n minus k minus 1 factorial is indeed n minus k factorial. And so I have a common denominator. I'll rewrite like this k factorial times n minus k factorial. And then the second fraction is n minus k multiplied by n minus 1 factorial over that same denominator. Just like that. In my next step, what I'd like to do is I'd like to add those numerators. Now the thing about those numerators is they're actually like terms. So just to illustrate that, let me rewrite it this way. Here's my common denominator. Here's k happy faces, just like that. And then here is n minus k happy faces. Happy face here, of course, is representing n minus 1 factorial. Writing it like this allows you to see that the coefficients of n minus 1 factorials are k and n minus k. 
And so to finish up this proof, all I need to do is add those coefficients. When I add k and n minus k, I just get n. n happy faces. Well, happy face was n minus 1 factorial. And now we can see that in our very last step, before we get to the desired left-hand side, all we need to do is multiply n by n minus 1 factorial. And that gives us n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial, which of course is equal to n choose k as desired. Now that proof is nice because it shows some algebraic skill in getting a common denominator and it shows some understanding of how factorials work, but it doesn't explain to us why this statement is true. That's what a combinatorial proof would do. It would explain the meaning behind n choose k equals n minus 1 choose k minus 1 plus n minus 1 choose k. In order to understand that, let's look at this problem from a different perspective. Recall Pascal's triangle, which we used the other day for path counting. We recognize that if for example, there were 10 different paths that led to this position and 10 different paths that led to that position, then it was clear that there must be 20 different paths that lead to this position right here. And down here, if there's seven paths and 21 paths, then there's gonna be 28 ways I can get to this spot. And also 28 ways that I can get to this spot because it also has seven and 21 above it. Pascal's triangle is actually the key to the proof that we just did. So much so, in fact, that what we proved was called Pascal's rule. Pascal's rule says that for integers uh, where k is greater than or equal to zero and n is greater than or equal to k, it's always true that the combination n choose k is equal to n minus one choose k minus one plus n minus one choose k. We proved it through algebra. But now we can come to understand it through what's going on with our triangle. Imagine you're on a particular row, Pascal's triangle. Maybe it's the n minus first row. There's all these entries on the n minus first row. We don't know how many because we don't know what n is. Take any two entries that are right next door to each other. Maybe this one right here and this one right here. Let's say the red one is in the k minus one position and the blue one is in the kth position. Well then, those little red and blue bubbles that I just drew right there must be represented using these combinations. n minus one choose k minus one since it's in row n minus one and in position k minus one. And then this one right here, because it's right next to it. The question is, what would we get if we were to add those two together? Well, we would move down to the nth row of the triangle. And the position would be the same as the one on the right, since we have one extra entry here on the left. And thus this green bubble would be in the nth row in the kth position, and thus it would be n choose k. Let's look at a less abstract way to try to understand this. Here's a specific problem. Among nine candy bars, one contains a golden ticket. In how many ways can you choose three? In how many ways can you choose three and get the golden ticket? And in how many ways can you choose three and not get the golden ticket? Pause the video and see if you can figure out the answers to these three questions. Whatever answers you got, I hope you self-check them because it is important in this problem that A is equal to B plus C. A is the total number of ways to do something, and B describes the number of ways to do a specific case of that thing, and C describes all the other cases, not getting the golden ticket. The answer in A should be nine choose three. Nine choose three because there's nine candy bars and we're gonna choose three of them. Order doesn't matter, so we just work it out. Nine factorial over three factorial, six factorial, and that's nine times eight times seven, times six factorial over three times two times one times six factorial. Cancel these out. 
and you end up getting 84 different ways. For letter B, in how many ways can you choose three and get the golden ticket? There's only one golden ticket and I need to choose it. That can be done in one choose one ways. Meanwhile, there are eight other candy bars and I have to choose two of them because I'm still asked to get three total. So this is equal to eight choose two, which is eight factorial over two factorial times six factorial. And this simplifies to 28. The last question says, in how many ways can you choose three and not get the golden ticket? Still one golden ticket. This time I don't want to choose it. That's one choose zero times eight other candy bars I have to choose from. And I want to select three of them because I don't have any yet if I didn't get the golden ticket. And that is just equal to eight choose three since one choose zero is also equal to one. And that's eight factorial over three factorial, five factorial, which is eight times seven times six factorial. Now six factorial will entirely cancel with the denominator since three factorial is six. And so this is just 56. And we, so, we see that in, in fact, it is true that A, the number of ways A can be done, which is 84, is equal to the number of ways B can be done, which is 28, plus the number of ways C can be done, which is 56. If we wanted to write it using combinations, we would be saying that nine choose three is equal to, now I'll leave off the one choose one and the one choose zero, since those are just ones, eight choose two plus eight choose three. And this is Pascal's rule in action. It says if you have n choose k, you can break it into cases, n minus one choose k minus one, one less on the eight, one less for the two, and n minus one choose k. And so we can think about why Pascal's rule is true in a number of different ways. We've showed it al algebraically. We thought about it through path counting on the actual triangle. But now we've also seen that it's true because if you have some number of ways to do something and you split it into two cases, so this is done by designating one thing as the special. In this case, the golden ticket was the special. And then my two cases will be the number of ways to do that thing and get the special and the ways to do that thing and not get the special. Those two cases must add up to the whole, the total number of ways to do that thing. Let's finish up this video with one more proof. This one is fairly simple, but also very important. If we wanted to look at why this was true algebraically, it wouldn't be too much work. We'd start on the more complicated side, which I'd suppose would be this side, and would rewrite n choose n minus k using our combination formula, n factorial over n minus k factorial, multiplied by the difference factorial, which would be n minus n minus k. We would simplify the expression in that second set of parentheses there, just like this, n minus n plus k, would recognize that those n's cancel, and then we would be done, because we'd end up with the formula for n choose k. Once again, that algebraic proof doesn't really show us a whole lot about what's going on here. So if we looked at this from an argument standpoint, we would say this is the number of ways to select k things from n things. That's just what combinations are counting for us. Meanwhile, when I look at n minus k, that's the number of ways to not select k things from n things. You're leaving out certain things every single time you select other things. And so the two ways must be equivalent. We can look at it one more way. When we look at Pascal's triangle, we notice that there's a symmetry there. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. 1, 5, 10. 10, 5, 1. In any given row in Pascal's triangle, you'll see that symmetry. If you have something in the nth row in the kth position, it's going to have a buddy over here that's exactly n minus k, uh, the n minus kth position, meaning it's k units from the right-hand side rather than from the left-hand side. And so we can see why they're equal in the triangle as well.